In the previous episodes we went through the 10 roles of Cyberpunk Red and selected a fixer for our character. We also generated a life path to add characterization and depth to this fixer. We decided that her handle is Mithra and that she frequents a nightclub named Limelight where she connects buyers and sellers for several successful night markets. There are rival fixers competing for the same clients, adding danger to her life. In this video we're going to determine her stats and skills. I will also provide commentary on how you can approach stats and skills as a new player. Statistics or stats determine a character's natural capabilities in game. There are 10 stats in the game, usually rated from 1 to 8, where higher is better. The stats are further divided into four different categories. Mental stats include intelligence, which determines how bright you are, willpower, which determines your ability to face stress and danger, cool, which determines your ability to impress and influence others, and empathy, which determines your ability to relate to others. Combat stats include technique, which determines your ability to manipulate tools or instruments, and reflexes, which determines your response time and coordination. Fortune stats include luck, which acts as a resource used to enhance roles. Physical stats include body, which determines your size and toughness, dexterity, which determines your physical agility, and movement, which determines your speed. I mentioned in the first video that there are three approaches to character creation in Cyberpunk Red. The quickest approach to Street Rat method offers a series of predetermined templates based on your role. Because Mithra is a fixer, I need to roll a d10 and allocate the defined stats based on the outcome of that role. I rolled a 1, so that would mean Intelligence 8, Reflexes 5, Dexterity 7, Technique 4, Cool 6, Willpower 5, Luck 8, Movement 5, Body 5 and Empathy 8. This indicates a character is very intelligent and able to relate to others, which is useful for someone we have defined as sneaky and deceptive. She has high dexterity too, making her somewhat physically capable, but she's overall weak-willed and weak-bodied. She wouldn't be prone to taking risks and would likely have a cautious and thoughtful approach to challenges. The edge runner method is similar to the street rat one, but here you roll for each individual stat on the template. This adds an additional element of randomization to your character creation, but it makes it so that stat distribution could become uneven between players of a group. The templates are designed to favor certain stats for certain roles, but there's still a risk of being disappointed in the outcome. If you're not into that, I suggest taking the street rat or complete package methods here. The edge runner method would make Mithra stats intelligence 6, reflexes 7, dexterity 5, technique 4, cool 6, willpower 6, luck 8, movement 5, body 5 and empathy 7. This version of Mithra is a jack of all traits. Her highest non-luck traits are reflexes and empathy, making her a good judge of character and quick to react. She's physically weaker than the previous variant, and I picture her as maybe having a bit of an unhealthy lifestyle with little care for her physical well-being. I personally think that Jack of all trades characters are bland and prefer characters with a contrast of high and low traits. Just like how high traits define a character's strengths, the weakest ones can be narratively meaningful and form interesting role-playing opportunities. It's important to embrace your low stats and don't be discouraged by them. Finally, the complete package method hands power over stat generation over to you. Here you have a pool of character points which you use to buy the stats you want. How many points you get to start with is determined by the GM, but the normal amount for a starting character is 62. My recommendation is to start by putting 6 in each stat and then add your two remaining points in two stats you favor more than others. You can then shift the stats around by decreasing some to increase others until you're satisfied. This lets you shift things around without having to worry about losing track of your points. Remember that 8 is the maximum. A stat with lower than 4 is discouraged, but could be interesting if justified narratively. Personally, I prefer to start by ranking each stat based on how I value its importance for my character. Because I want Mithra to be intelligent and social, I rank the stats in the following way. Intelligence 7, Empathy 7, Cool 6, Reflexes 6, Willpower 6, Luck 6, Dexterity 6, Technique 6, Move 6 and Body 6. Now I'm going to start shifting points around, so I start by lowering my two lowest ranked stats Move and Body to 4 and use the 4 points to add plus 1 to my 4 highest ranked stats. 
This gives me Intelligence 8, Empathy 8, Cool 7, Reflexes 7, Willpower 6, Luck 6, Dexterity 6, Technique 6, Move 4 and Body 4. I then take my lowest 6 and reduce it to 5 before increasing my highest 6 to 7. As a final tweak, I reduce Willpower to 6 and increase Move to 5. My final stats are Intelligence 8, Empathy 8, Cool 7, Reflexes 7, Willpower 6, Luck 6, Dexterity 6, Technique 5, Move 5 and Body 4. After we have defined the character stats, we need to determine derived stats. These are additional traits that are based on the stats we just established. First is hit points, HP, which determines the character's will to live in physical constitution. It is calculated using 10 plus your average body and willpower rounded up. For Mithra, this would be 15 as street rat, 16 as edge runner, and 15 as complete package. Her seriously wounded wound threshold is half of her total HP rounded up, which is 8 for all three. She also has a death save, which is equal to body, 5 for street rat and edge runner, 4 for complete package. Another derived stat is humanity, which represents how well you can interact with people around you. As you acquire in human augmentations, your humanity score can go down, risking cyberpsychosis. You gain 10 points of humanity for each point of empathy. For Mithra, this would be 80 humanity for Street Rat, 70 for Edge Runner, and 80 for Complete Package. While stats define your overall capabilities, skills add precision and detail to what it is you're actually good at. They represent learned traits where associated stats give extra advantages. For example, while the intelligence stats determine how bright you are, the criminology skill determines how good you are at examining evidence or searching through police files. The skill uses your intelligence stats but may add an extra bonus if you're trained in it. A higher intelligence could complement for a low criminology score, since your natural ability helps you put clues together. But similarly, a high criminology score could complement a lower intelligence score, since your trained criminology lets you know what evidence to look for and how to handle it. In Cyberpunk Red, some skills are harder to learn than others. When allocating points to improve a skill, those harder skills require 2 points per skill level instead of 1 point per skill level. You can recognize them in the book by the multiplied by 2 mark next to the skill name. There are 9 skill categories. Awareness skills, body skills, control skills, education skills, fighting skills, performance skills, ranged weapon skills, social skills and technique skills. Because there are many of them, I'm not going to go through them one by one. If you're new to the game and want to learn more about skills and skill checks, check out my video on the subject. Where stats are ranged from 1 to 8, skills are normally rated from 1 to 10. There are some basic skills that must start at 2. Athletics, brawling, concentration, conversation, education, evasion, first aid, human perception, language street slang, local expert your home, perception, persuasion and stealth. The language determining life path starts at 4. Because Mithra is a fixer with operator 4, she also gets a second language that also starts at 4. When using the street rat method, all skills are pre-generated based on your role. There is a template for each role, with all basic skills being listed in bold. For Mithra, this would be Athletics 2, Brawling 2, Concentration 2, Conversation 6, Education 2, Evasion 6, First Aid 2, Human Perception 6, Language Street Slang 4, Language Farsi 4, Language Arabic 4, Local Expert Your Home 6, Perception 2, Persuasion 4, Stealth 2, Bribery 6, Business 6, Forgery 6, Handgun 6, Pick Lock 4, Streetwise 6, and Trading 6. To get your final skill level, you need to add these numbers to the skill's associated stats for a final result of Athletics 9, Brawling 9, Concentration 7, Conversation 14, Education 10, Evasion 13, First Aid 6, Human Perception 14, Language Street Slang 12, Language Farsi 12, Language Arabic 12, Local Expert Your Home 14, Perception 10, Persuasion 10, Stealth 9, Briber 12, Business 14, Forger 10, Handgun 11, Picklock 8, Streetwise 12, and Trading 12. This method covers the essential skills for many fixer concepts. It's quick and easy with several high skills, but at the cost of customization. The Edge Runner method has the same predetermined skills, with the difference that you determine their levels. You get 86 skill points to distribute. 
No skill can be higher than 6 or lower than 2. Skills marked as multiplied by 2 cost 2 points per level. There's no such skill in the fixer list, but there are some in the list for other roles. I'm going to take a similar approach to this as I did to the edge runner stats. Because I have 86 points and there are 20 skills in the list, I start by allocating 4 points to each skill, with the remaining 6 points allocated to 6 skills that I favor more than others. I also rank the skills based on how I want to prioritize them. This gives me the following list. Business 5, Human Perception 5, Streetwise 5, Conversation 5, Persuasion 5, Trading 5, Briber 4, Evasion 4, Local Expert Your Home 4, Handgun 4, Education 4, Concentration 4, Perception 4, Language Street Slang 4, Athletics 4, Brawling 4, Stealth 4, Pick Lock 4, Forger 4, and First Aid 4. Because none of these skills have increased costs, I'm going to shift these points around until I'm satisfied. I'll start by reducing my three lowest ranked skills from 4 to 2, and use those points to increase my six highest ranked skills from 5 to 6. I then reduce the next three lowest skills from 4 to 3, and use those to increase the next seventh to ninth highest skills from 4 to 5. This gives me the following list. Business 6, Human Perception 6, Streetwise 6, Conversation 6, Persuasion 6, Trading 6, Briber 5, Evasion 5, Local Expert Your Home 5, Handgun 4, Education 4, Concentration 4, Perception 4, Language Street Slang 4, Athletics 3, Brawling 3, Stealth 3, Picklock 2, Forgery 2, and First Aid 2. Looking over this list, I decided I want to increase my combat prowess a bit and reduce local expert back to 4 so that I can increase handgun to 5. Now I'm satisfied. After adding the stats to the skill values, we get business 12, human perception 13, streetwise 12, conversation 13, persuasion 12, trading 12, bribery 11, evasion 10, handgun 12, Local Expert Your Home 10, Education 10, Concentration 10, Perception 10, Language Street Slang 10, Language Farsi 10, Language Arabic 10, Athletics 8, Brawling 8, Stealth 8, Pick Lock 6, Forgery 6, and First Aid 6. The complete package doesn't give you any templates to work from, but otherwise work much the same as the Edge Runner method. You have 86 points to spend, no skill can be higher than 6 and the basic skills must be at least two. These are all bold on the character sheet. You have more freedom here though, so you can have non-basic skills at lower than two. I start by going through the skill list and note each skill that I am potentially interested in. At this point I'm only noting interest in them, I might not invest in all of them. I already have concentration and perception from awareness skills, but I also note lip reading as a potential skill. Since Mithra is a social character, being able to read lips could be helpful at gleaming information from social events without being present at the conversation. From body skills I already have athletics and stealth, but I note down contortionist and resist torture or drugs. I skip control skills entirely since I don't think any of them is a good fit. As for education skills, I already have education, language, street slang, Farsi and Arabic, as well as local expert your home. I take note of accounting, bureaucracy, business, gamble, and library search. From fighting skills, I already have brawling and evasion, and note down melee weapon. I ignore performance skills, but note both autofire and handgun from ranged weapon skills. Autofire is a master skill and costs twice the points. From social skills, I already have conversation, human perception, and persuasion, I take note of bribery, personal grooming, streetwise, trading, as well as wardrobe and style. From technique skills I already have first aid, I take note of forgery and pickpocket. Adding my basic skills and noted skills together, I have 30 of them which is a lot. If I add language Farsi and language Arabic it becomes 32. Now you may have your own system for how to distribute points. This is just an example on how you can do it. Start by adding one point in each basic and noted skill. Remember to note two points per skill level in mastery skills like autofire. Then go through each skill again and increase all basic skills as well as favored noted skills from 1 to 2. For Mithra this costs 58 of the 86 points and gives the following skills. 
Concentration 2, Lip Reading 1, Perception 2, Athletics 2, Contortionist 2, Resist Torture Drugs 1, Stealth 2, Accounting 1, Bureaucracy 2, Business 2, Education 2, Gamble 1, Language Street Slang 2, Library Search 1, Local Expert Your Home 2, Brawling 2, Evasion 2, Melee Weapon 2, Auto Fire 2, Handgun 2, Bribery 2, Conversation 2, Human Perception 2, Persuasion 2, Personal Grooming 2, Streetwise 2, Trading 2, Wardrobe and Style 2, First Aid 2, Forgery 2, and Pickpocket 1. With 28 points to spare, I go through each skill I've listed at 2 and start increasing some of them to 3. The skills that I increase to 3 are Perception, Business, Language Street Slang, Local Expert Your Home, Evasion, Handgun, Bribery, Conversation, Human Perception, Persuasion, Streetwise and Trading. This costs 12 points, giving me 16 to spare. I go through all of these skills that are now 3 and spend points to increase some of them to 4. The ones I increase are Business, Language Street Slang, Evasion, Handgun, Conversation, Human Perception, Persuasion, Streetwise and Trading. This costs 9 points, giving me 7 to spare. I go through the skills that are on 4 and increase some to 5. Business, Handgun, Conversation, Human Perception, Persuasion and Trading. This costs 6 points, giving me a single point to spare. Before I start increasing skills from 5 to 6, I take a look at the skills that are at 1 and consider if any of them can be dropped completely. I want to keep lip reading, accounting and library search, but I'm impartial to resist torture or drugs, gamble and pickpocket. I consider which of my skills listed at 5 that I want to increase to 6, if more than 1, I'll start dropping once. I decide to increase handgun, conversation and trading. This requires that I reduce 2 skills to earn 2 more points, so I decide to drop gamble and pickpocket from 1 to 0. My final skills after adding stats are concentration 8, lip reading 9, perception 11, athletics 8, contortionist 8, resist torture drug 7, stealth 8, accounting 9, bureaucracy 10, business 13, education 10, language street slang 12, language farsi 12, language arabic 12, library search 9, local expert your home 11, brawling 8, evasion 10, melee weapon 8, auto fire 9, handgun 13, bribery 10, conversation 14, human perception 13, persuasion 12, Personal Grooming 9, Streetwise 10, Trading 13, Wardrobe and Style 9, First Aid 7 and Forgery 7. This final method is definitely the most time consuming one, but it's also the one that lets you delve deeper into every skill option. By taking this extra bit of time to buy individual skills, I can make sure to add skills that fit my personal characterization more than simply the role template. I end up with more skills this way though, for good or for ill. This is all there is for stats and skills, and now we have three variants of Mithra using the three different approaches. In the next and final episode, we're going to complete the character by outfitting her and giving her cyberware. If you caught this video once it came out, you can find the final episode on Patreon. It will be released on YouTube in a couple of days. If you're watching from the future, you'll find a link to the final episode in the description below. Also, make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Until next time.